welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Testing Concept Series. This is part 6 of the series and in today's episode we are going to learn all about functional testing. I started this concept series so that all our friends who are developers and QA we all get to learn and master all the basic concepts that are required um, as we grow along in our, in our careers. So essentially these concepts are required and uh, mandatory I would say for all developers and QA. So let's get started with today's topic which is functional testing. This is part 6 of the series. Uh, if you have missed out on the earlier episodes, please do check them out so that your concepts are really clear and you have continuity in your learning. Alright, so today we are talking about functional testing. This is a word and terminology that you would hear a lot um, in your projects uh, when you are working in an agile kind of a model. So functional testing is a method of software testing that focuses on the functionality of an application or system. In other words, functional testing is concerned only with verifying whether the application is able to perform its intended functions correctly or not. The, the QA team will validate those with a preset of determined expectations and when we run our application, they will confirm it by matching that whether the application is doing what it is supposed to do. Functional testing can be done at performed at various stages of software development process. It typically starts with creation of test cases based on functional requirements and then starts on. If you are working in an agile environment, when the user stories are written, the QA team will start with their uh, test scripts or test suites and they start writing that, those test scripts parallelly. Right? So basically it starts when developer starts it, uh, his or her stories. Functional testing helps us identify defects, errors and other, other issues that may affect the functionality of the application. Now, a lot of times people get confused that is UI part of the functional? Yes, it is. Along with functionality, uh, look and feel, user experience, everything together, whether it is entirely performing end to end as per its requirements or not. That's part of it. So that's all covered. That's all covered under functional testing. Now, what are the different types of functional testing? Right? There are different types of functional testing that can be performed on an application or system. Now, unit testing, integration testing, system testing, regression testing, user acceptance testing. These are all different types of functionality testing because they are all checking some or the other functionality aspect of an application. When we write unit test, we are testing the focus is on the smallest units of code like uh, methods or functions or classes that we have implemented. Integration test will typically involve functional testing that involves different modules or services or uh, APIs, etc. System testing is a type of functional testing that focuses on the overall functionality of the application. Regression testing is a type of functional testing that's performed after changes have been made to code or other parts of the application. So it's more of a regression suit uh, that you run after every build or after every sprint. User acceptance testing is a type of testing where it's performed by the end users. Your business users will come and um, use the application and conduct the review based on whether they run a particular workflow and see whether everything is working as expected. So these are the different types of functional testings, right? So don't get confused that it's only a small thing that only end to end or black box. No. These are all different types of functional testing that are involved, which tests the functionality at a certain level of the application, right? So keep these in mind because these are extremely important as well. Now let's talk about some of the advantages of functional testing. Now, the best part is that the functional testing can be done by anyone, right? Uh, if even if they have functional knowledge, uh, technical knowledge, they can write unit tests, integration tests, etc. If they don't have that knowledge, they can do a, a UAD test or just, uh, you know, black box testing. It allows for a greater focus on the user experience. Functional testing is concerned how the application functions, right? How the application behaves, whether all the happy path is working or not. The, the negative path is also tested in terms that user should not be allowed to do this. Those all con comes under functional testing. So there is a lot of focus on user experience, right? At the end of the day, user is going to use your application. Now it can be performed early in the development process. That means, like I said, all the unit testing will start with the day one when you start writing code. 
same way QA teams can start writing their own uh, integration or system tests uh, automation tests early on in process so basically this functional testing can start very early in the process which helps because after every cycle every sprint we test we do regression and we catch the defects early on in the process now a lot of these uh, can be automated which is a good news functional testing a lot of times 60-70% uh, of the times you can easily automate the possible scenarios uh, easily but again uh, like I said um, you human intervention is definitely required because uh, like negative testing you cannot possibly test all the negative use cases through only through code or automation but definitely 70-80% you can really automate and that is a lot of time saving resource saving overall functional testing helps in the overall quality of the software and functional testing can help us in identify defects and issues that may affect the f functionality of the application now let's talk about some of the disadvantages right uh, talk about time consuming and resource in intensive right so functional testing requires a creation of certain test cases that are based on functional requirements of the application now these are all time consuming say if I say we need 99% of code coverage of all the things we have to write end-to-end -end script those all take time so that should be accounted as part of your sprint estimations or story estimations it cannot provide adequate coverage uh, like I gave you earlier example also that your code coverage of unit test may be 99% but there are still chances that there would be a lot of defects in the code what it means is that the numbers of coverage doesn't practically convert it into the number of scenarios that are possible uh, and that's some of the thing that is something is it uh, it's not adequate coverage and that will definitely require some kind of a human intervention uh, definitely so it is not always effective uh, just testing whether it's doing what it is supposed to do is not a real good case because though the application might be working well what happens when you when you increase the load when you increase the number of users on the system right so those are some things that we don't know yet and functional testing cannot certify that for that you need to perform performance testing load testing compatible testing and security testing so it's not suitable for all types of testing um, yeah so if if there is a um, things like uh, complex uh, things that cannot be always be automated or functional testing cannot really if there is no single path of x equal to y kind of a thing right like you provide a x input and you're expecting y uh, if that is not the case always really in a complex uh, setup of enterprise applications uh, this may be really tricky so that's where usability testing exploratory testing they come in handy along with functional testing now because uh, functional testing is focused on the applications functionality it, ca it can be tempting to rely too heavily on the test results right now a lot of times we really heavily rely on those test results but again with, with the pure number of possibilities of uh, the permutation and combination of happy path negative path uh, the data boundary etc so that becomes really too um, uh, reliance on this basic functional testing so that is a disadvantage again all right so that's all about uh, functional testing uh, that you should know in terms of um, at least the terminology and the basic concept um, I hope you enjoyed this episode if you like my work and tutorials please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash art tutorials in the next episode I will talk about non-functional testing which a lot of you might already be doing without knowledge but these are the concepts these are the terms terminologies that you should be aware of and that's why I'm continuing this series I hope you'll join me in the next episode and we will cover non-functional testing thank you so much for joining see you in the next episode